Hello everyone, welcome back to the Peace Love Hormones podcast. It is me, your host and founder, Maddie Miles. In today's episode, we will be talking all about this phenomenon known as adrenal fatigue, what this term means, perhaps a better term for this phenomenon, what is going on within the body during times of adrenal fatigue, and most importantly, what you can do to reverse adrenal fatigue and to support your overall adrenal health. By now, most of us know that adrenal fatigue is not a medical diagnosis in itself. So we know that conventional medicine views things as very black and white, very like to the extreme. You either have high of a certain thing or you have low of a certain thing. They don't really necessarily look, and when I say they, I mean, you know, doctors reviewing conventional run labs don't always look at the performance or the functionality of certain biomarkers such as hormones for example so you either have really high cortisol or you have super low cortisol and when we say adrenal fatigue and and more importantly why a lot of people are actually moving away from saying adrenal fatigue is because during adrenal fatigue our adrenals aren't actually tired and they're not no longer performing so if your adrenals had stopped producing cortisol well then that does warrant a medical diagnosis known as addison's disease and there are various adrenal diseases where the adrenals are underperforming but when alternative holistic natural naturopathic medicine says that you have adrenal fatigue, they are not or they shouldn't be referring to Addison's or another adrenal-based disease. Again, those are conversations for another episode for a different time and perhaps with your primary care physician. Again, those are adrenal diseases, but today we are going to be talking about adrenal fatigue, which really was just this term that was coined um, more so in the naturopathic alternative health space. I don't always like saying alternative, but let's just say the functional, the functional naturopathic health space um, really came up with this word adrenal fatigue. And again, one last time, I'm not going to keep repeating myself. I know I can I can do that sometimes. So one last time before we get into the rest of the episode, I just want to state again, we are not talking about Addison's disease, nor are we talking about any other adrenal disease. We're talking about adrenal fatigue. Um, and actually a, a better word for this would be allostatic load, which we'll get into. So uh, to conclude on conventional medicine, why many of your doctors are not acknowledging your symptoms, even though you're coming in and saying, hey, I ran some labs with my functional doctor or my naturopathic doctor or my holistic practitioner, and I was told that I have adrenal fatigue. And sadly, a lot of doctors doctors will just not listen to that. They'll totally discredit it or discard it. And I've even had some women tell me that their doctor has literally laughed in their face when she told their doctor that she has adrenal fatigue. So conventional medicine has not quite caught up to this. And whether we call it allostatic load, which I'll get into here in a moment, or we call it adrenal fatigue. No matter what we decide to label it as, these symptoms are very, very real. So I also want to say I'm really, really sorry if you're listening to this and you yourself have been dismissed by a doctor, whether it was symptoms of adrenal fatigue or symptoms of something else. If you've been dismissed before and disrespected in the doctor's office, I'm really, really sorry. I'm raising my hand over here too. I have been disrespected a handful of times throughout my life. So unfortunately, that's the reality for many of us ladies. But that's why we have resources like this podcast to support us holistically, naturally in our healing health journey. Anyway, adrenal fatigue, the symptoms that come with it are very, very real. Adrenal fatigue isn't always the best term for it because our adrenals aren't necessarily fatigued and they are not not producing cortisol anymore. Yes, they're producing lower amounts of cortisol. So yeah, you could say that they're exhausted. Um, But again, if your adrenals were not producing cortisol, then that would be Addison's disease or you'd have to look into some other type of adrenal disease. So I hope that makes sense. The symptoms of adrenal fatigue are very, very real. And some of these symptoms include weight gain, hair loss, fatigue, hence the name, anxiety, low libido, hormone imbalances, infertility, brain fog, digestive problems, irritability, sleep problems, lowered immunity, thyroid and autoimmune issues, and sugar, salts, and caffeine cravings. 
that was a lot of symptoms, I know. And at the end of the day, everything is connected. So our hormones really do run the show. They are these really powerful chemical messengers working throughout our body all throughout the day and the night. So really, especially when we're talking about chronic issues with our hormone health and just our overall health and well-being, we will see a lot of these issues. So you may be going, why do I have gut issues and thyroid issues and sleep problems and irritability and cravings? Like how are these things all related? Well, they're all related at the end of the day because our body is one ecosystem, all communicating with one another, all the different parts and cells and, and just parts that make us who we are. So again, a lot of these things start to happen in the long run and um, adrenal fatigue or allostatic load, whatever you want to refer to it as, it does not happen overnight. This happens over a prolonged time of stress and inflammation on the body. So again, we'll get into that. But I do want to say that if you are here and you're listening to this and you either have in the past or are currently struggling with any of these symptoms, whether it be related to adrenal fatigue or not, you're not alone. Millions of women experience these symptoms every single year and millions of women experience adrenal fatigue every single year. So again, really alarming stat. It's so weird and out of body that I can deliver that statistic and not be shocked or surprised myself. Um, I've just been in this space for a long time and and as a researcher for a very long time. So a lot of these stats are not alarming to me anymore, which is really sad, but I'm working on being a part of the change in the fix. As you know, if you've been following me in Peace Love Hormones for a while. So another term and arguably a more well, accurate term for adrenal fatigue is allostatic load. So I've mentioned this a few times throughout the episode. Now let's talk about what in the world is allostatic load. So this is the deterioration that happens to the human body when it is chronically exposed to an activated stress response. And before you all go and start saying that you are not stressed, let me stop you there because I still do this to this day. My initial response to when anyone asks me if I'm okay, or if I'm stressed, I say, no, I'm not stressed. I feel great. And you can feel great and happy and healthy and grateful and all of these beautiful high vibration emotions and feelings. Um, but the reality is you can still be very stressed at the same time. They can definitely coexist with one another. And more often than not, we are experiencing stress to some degree. And it doesn't even mean that it has to be emotional stress. You don't have to be going through a really intense breakup or a friend breakup or a job switch or a move across the country. You don't have to be doing these really intense things to experience stress. Stress can come in the form of exercise, over-exercising especially. It can come in the form of dieting or eating in a restrictive way. It can come through even just drinking tap water or toxic water or not getting enough hydration and electrolytes. It can come from not sleeping properly, um, not sleeping enough, not getting into bed early enough. It can come from illness, including bacterial or viral, even if it happened months ago. So stress is a normal physiological response that happens within our body and it happens acutely all the time. However, it's when stress happens chronically that we start to experience negative health symptoms. And as women, eventually this turns into allostatic load or adrenal fatigue. So adrenal fatigue is also known as allostatic load. And it's the deterioration that happens to the human body when it's chronically, chronically exposed to an activated stress response. Also, I didn't even mention that our air around us, unless you live out in the mountains in a secluded, beautiful cabin, our air is not very clean and we are exposed to so many chemical pollutants in our air and that causes stress on the body. So I could just go on and on and on about how many different forms of stress we encounter every single day as humans, but I'll just leave it there because I did mention a lot of different things. So allostatic load also explains that yes, we are exposed to all of these different stressors every single day and our bodies are very resilient, especially when they're healthy. So they can take a lot 
out of this and recover and rebalance back to homeostasis. However, sometimes it just becomes too much for our bodies, especially if we're doing all of the things, which I feel like as women, we really get caught in this hamster wheel of just saying yes to everything, not having the best most healthy nourishing practices for ourselves and not having the best boundaries. We give a lot of ourselves to other people, whether it be family and loved ones or friends or work before we really give to ourselves. So I more often than not see women get caught on this hamster wheel of being an overachiever in every single thing of her life and, you know, being a really hard worker at work and also going to school and trying to cook healthy nourishing meals all three times a day and taking care of children and being a good friend and being a good wife or girlfriend and like all of these things, right? Being a good dog mom. Like we put a lot of pressure on ourselves and we can get so caught up in the race of life that we kind of make up as a society and it becomes way too much and our allostatic load gets too heavy and it creates all of these health issues. Again, commonly referred to as adrenal fatigue, where our body, after so long of pushing out and pumping cortisol and adrenaline, it starts to go, okay, we cannot keep producing this much cortisol and adrenaline because this is not healthy for our bodies and we are just deteriorating ourselves. So we need to dial back the production of cortisol and adrenaline does not mean that our adrenals stop producing it because again that would be Addison's disease but our adrenals do start to produce less cortisol and we feel exhausted and again cortisol in itself is not a bad hormone cortisol is naturally higher in the mornings for women and men it helps us to get up out of bed it brings us out of the melatonin sleep state it gets us up it gets us going it gets us moving again we just don't want too much of it and we also want to see that our cortisol drops back down in the evening so that our melatonin can start producing because the two cannot be producing at the same time. So you aren't producing, your body's not producing cortisol and melatonin at the same time. So we want both of them. We don't want too much or too little of either of them. So again, it's all about keeping our body like this nice, well-oiled machine. Not that we're machines and you can predict ourselves and our biomarkers all the time because we're humans and you know things change but we should be able to see like a general curvature and flow ebb and flow of our cortisol just like we should with all of our other hormones sex hormones or not all of this stress <laughs> going back to all of these stressors that we are experiencing all of the stress becomes a lot it overactivates our sympathetic nervous system our fight or flight our get up and go nervous system which includes the adrenals so all of a sudden our Adrenals, again, are overproducing cortisol and adrenaline to keep up with all of these things that we are doing throughout our day. And this, what, how am I trying to say this? This really quickly leads to symptoms such as weight gain around the middle section, um, total body systemic inflammation. So you can see that in the puffy hands. I saw this trend going around TikTok and Instagram. It was called the moon phase. A lot of women were talking about this moon phase that they had and were commonly associating it with PCOS. Um, but also that's a really big symptom of you just being the human body being inflamed and burnt out and potentially also having adrenal fatigue. So our nervous system, our sympathetic nervous system is really activated and our adrenals are overly activated. It's pushing out cortisol and adrenaline and weight gain is starting to happen around the midsection, moon phase, inflammation, um, chronically elevated cortisol also messes with our insulin, which can be problematic in not just the short term, but also the long term can lead to type 2 diabetes and blood sugar imbalances and just a whole cascade of, you know, mood swings and inflammation and hair loss. And just, again, it's like a domino effect with our health. So all of this can also suppress thyroid functioning, which is not great for so many things, and also suppress our reproductive functioning. So you'll often, more often than not, see your menstrual cycle go out the window and infertility issues start to arise. Also, it's important to mention that at the beginning of this whole process that eventually leads to uh, allostatic load and adrenal fatigue, that the adrenaline and cortisol that are being produced at the beginning feel amazing. Like it feels like you just drank a really big matcha or have 
had the best night's sleep and you just feel like a superwoman. So it feels really good at first. Um, however, it does not feel good in the long term and it's not good to constantly be producing high levels of cortisol and adrenaline, which is why your body, your adrenals start to dial it back because it's not safe for the body and it can harm the body and, and the mind in the long term. So our bodies very quickly become exhausted, inflamed, and you can experience all the symptoms mentioned above and body aches. I think that was one of my biggest signs when I was dealing with some adrenal issues was I was constantly sore. No matter no matter if I did more low impact workouts and I did my stretching and my yoga, it was just like always sore and tense and I had headaches and it was just, it was a mess. So what can we do to overcome allostatic load and to feel healthy? So first, we need to make sure that the allostatic load um, is indeed allostatic load and indeed adrenal fatigue. And it's not another condition like Hashimoto's or iron deficiency anemia or Addison's disease or another adrenal disease. Um, a lot of these things, both on the adrenal side and more on the thyroid side and the um, anemia, all of those things often have similar symptoms to adrenal fatigue. So just make sure that you really know what is going on underneath the surface, because if it is one of those more, I don't want to say serious conditions and therefore imply that I'm undermining um, adrenal fatigue because adrenal fatigue is very serious. But as long as it's not on the autoimmune side um, of things and not on the more medical disease side of things, then you're okay to follow this protocol. Otherwise, you, you definitely want to make sure that you're working with someone who specializes in whether it's Hashimoto's or it's Addison's, etc. Making sure that you're working with someone for your own custom protocol and healing plan. So after you make sure that is, this is indeed adrenal fatigue, and allostatic load, it's very important to do a deep, life, deep dive into our life and see what creates stress in our life and what depletes our energy and what makes us really happy and gives us energy. So obviously there are things that we cannot always take away in our life, even if it is causing us stress, but there are a lot of things that we can. And I was really surprised when I looked through everything that I was committing to in my life and there were a lot of things that I could drop and it doesn't mean it was easy. I definitely kind of guilt tripped myself for saying no to certain things and turning down certain opportunities, but I did it and I'm very grateful. Years later, looking back on it, I'm very, very grateful that I did. So, you know, kind of let go what you can and also add in more things that make you happy, relaxed, and give you energy. And also, I know this may sound super annoying because I feel like whenever I was told this when I was struggling with being really stressed and adrenal exhaustion, I would get frustrated when people would say, well, just change your perspective on things. And I was like, but I I am very positive and I try to think about things very positively and I don't feel like it's helping. It does help. It really, really does. So if we can just change our perspective to the things that cause stress and just have this overarching feeling and sentiment of gratitude and excitement, and you can still acknowledge like this is stressful or this is overwhelming or this is kind of a drag, but have like an overarching sentiment of gratitude. It, it does help. I, I promise it does. <laughs> um, next to sleep, arguably one of the most important things. I have a really great in-depth episode just on sleep and natural sleep tips. So I highly recommend listening to that on Spotify or Apple or watching if you like to watch on YouTube. But making sure that we get good quality sleep every single night, not only that we are getting eight to nine hours of sleep, but that we are getting into bed around 10 p.m., maybe a little bit earlier. If you can, that would be great. The earlier we can get into bed, before midnight, the better. So I know some people go to bed as early as 8 or 8.30 p.m. because they wake up super early. Um, and then on the later end of that range, I would recommend getting into bed no later than 10 p.m. So making sure you get good quality sleep because sleep is when we do our repair and rejuvenation and the bulk of our healing. So both the body and the mind. Next would be nutrition. So quality nutrition supports our vitamin and mineral reserves, which can help to combat stress and to replete, which has been lost during times of stress because we know that when we're stressed, we dump minerals and electrolytes. So we want to make sure that we are making sure that we're eating quality food and we're eating enough. I know as women, we tend to restrict our foods a lot. There is so much nasty information out there that we should be dieting 
eating and overly fasting and restricting and all of these things. And again, nutrition is a very uh, a very broad topic and nutrition is very bio-individualized too. So like with the sleep, <laughs> I do have an entire episode on nutrition. I have a couple episodes on nutrition because nutrition does deserve its own spotlight. And really at the end of the day, we should just be choosing quality foods and eating enough food for our body. Everything else is pretty bio-individualized. So but I do have an episode on nutrition and about the Mediterranean diet and just feeding ourselves with quality nourishing foods. Um, I already mentioned this a little bit, but hydration, hydrating with mineralized water is always important, but especially if we are in a state of high stress and exhaustion, minerals support our adrenal and cellular health. So whenever I feel a little bit tired, I'm hitting that afternoon slump, which does, which does not happen all the time, but when it does, I make sure to reach for an electrolyte drink, um, not, <laughs> not caffeine, that's for sure. So electrolytes, you can make your own at home electrolyte drink. I've posted a recipe on Instagram before, but half a lemon squeeze, a little pinch of sea salt, and um, a little bit of raw organic honey and spring water. That would be great. Next is herbal medicine. So adaptogens specifically to support the nervous system and our resilience to stress. One of my absolute favorites is ashwagandha. Ashwagandha has an entire podcast episode dedicated to it on the Peace Love Hormones channel. And ashwagandha is an herb, an adaptogenic herb that I take every single day and I cannot recommend it enough for both women and men. It has so many, like literally pages long in terms of health benefits. So I review all of that in my ashwagandha episode. I take ashwagandha every single day in my organic herbal tincture sleepy. I take it before bed. It helps me sleep. It helps me get good quality deep and REM sleep and helps to repair my nervous system and make it more resilient while I'm sleeping. So it is a must for me. And if you want to listen to that episode, I will link it up as well in the description of this episode. And Shatavari is another one of my favorite adaptogenic herbs, especially for women. It is just like the queen adaptogen for women. Lastly is finding a time for yourself. So preferably finding time for yourself every single day, even if it's just something really small, like going on a morning walk or an evening walk with yourself and not being glued to your phone or checking emails or checking texts, just having a nature walk, or it could be a bath, or it could be a sauna, it could be a workout that feels really, really good. Like not a workout that is being forced upon you by anyone or a crazy high intensity workout, but a workout like yoga or Pilates that just makes you feel happy and energized and glowy inside afterwards. Um, also acupuncture is one of my most favorite things to do. And I do acupuncture. I get it done about once a week is kind of my cadence at this moment in time in my life. And I could not recommend it enough to women who are struggling with adrenal based issues. I think that's all I wanted to say, but yeah, find time for yourself. It's so, so important. So not only filtering out what is bringing you stress and depleting your energy in this life, but also finding the things that give you energy and make you calm and happy and healthy and adding those back into your life. In addition to herbal medicine and supplementation, which I didn't even talk about supplementation, but magnesium complex and zinc and vitamin C are all wonderful supplements to think about including if you are experiencing high stress. And again, we can talk about this topic, adrenal fatigue, a lot more. If you're interested, just drop me a message in, on Instagram or send me a message on the Peace Love Hormones website. Or if you're watching this on YouTube, just comment below and we can definitely do a part two, part three, part four, however many parts we need to leave you feeling just really good and supported. So that concludes our episode for today. In today's episode, we talked about adrenal fatigue, why it is not recognized by the conventional meta system yet, why allostatic load is a better name for this condition, what is happening on a biochemical level, and most importantly, ways in which you can support yourself in overcoming allostatic load and to support your hormone, adrenal, and overall health holistically. If you enjoyed this episode, please do subscribe and give us a rating. If you're listening on Apple or Spotify, if you're listening on YouTube, then you can just hit subscribe and leave a comment below. Additionally, please share the story. This 
please share your stories. Please share this episode on your stories if you feel called to do so um, and tag me. I love seeing it when y'all tag me in your stories or to share this with anyone who you think would benefit from it. And lastly, I did just release my newest herbal tincture to leave menstrual cramps and discomfort. It's called Crampy and you can check it out on the peacelovehormones.com website. And I have a little discount code for you in the description of this episode. And it won't just be applied to crampy it'll be applied to any of my herbal tinctures that you choose to check out and try for yourself i'm sending you all so much love thank you for tuning in and until next time peace love hormones <laughs>